<laughs> at six o'clock. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody here to our Face of City Council meeting for March 15th, uh, 2023. And uh, I've asked a couple of our scouts to, if they would be willing to do our prayer and pledge. Uh, Remington Estes, uh, I've asked him if he would come and give us the opening prayer. So, Remington, come on up. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that we can attend this meeting and please bless that we can be productive today and get things done and that we can travel safely and in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Remington. Also, I have asked Dorian Suazo if he would come up and lead us in the flesh, pledge. I think I said it right, didn't I, Dorian? I hope. Will the audience stand up? Please repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dorian. Okay, we'll go on to uh, be the consent agenda. Number one, approval of the February 25th, 2023 City Council budget retreat minutes. Number two, approval of the March 1st, 2023 regular City Council meeting minutes. Uh, number three, state auditor fraud questionnaire. Number four, ordinance amendments to the Space and City Code, Title 10.28.040. Uh, guarantee amount. Number five, resolution Utah broadband lease agreement amendments. And number six, resolution municipal wastewater planning program uh, annual report. And number seven, resolution uh, Forsgren engineering contracts amendments. Unless there's any discussion on this con uh, consent agenda, I will, I'm ready to accept the motion. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion to been seconded. Uh, roll call vote starting with Council Christensen. Yes. Council Beecher. Yes. Council Carter. Yes. Uh, Council Proskard. Yes. Council Hyde is excused. She's on vacation, I believe. So that carries unanimously. Uh, petitions. Uh, Number one, presentation of new police officer and oath of office. Chief Bishop. Mayor, City Council, we'd just like to welcome uh, Officer Brian Clark uh, to our force. He graduated at the end of last month and has been on field training. So we'd like to welcome him and his family to our to our city and uh, a part of our family. We'll have our judge come on up front and swear him in. Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution of the Constitution of the State of Utah, the Constitution of the laws and ordinances of 1860, that I will discharge the duties of my office in Philadelphia. Get them all. <laughs> the whole family. At the other offices. At the other offices. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought so <laughs> easy. Come on up. Chief, would you have your officers come up with your new officers? We'd like to get a picture of the castle. Family, come on up, would you? 
Because of you, right? That's that's what they say. <laughs> Ron, thank you for being here and your and your family. Appreciate it very much. You want to see Just one second while I sign some of these. You may use mine. I haven't had this many scouts in a long time, so we appreciate you being here. Wow, oh, there's a lot of them. It's just cooking so quickly. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. So we have uh, the following certificates of attendance for some scouts here. We have one for Gidden Jones, KM Jones. Is that how you say it? KM. Okay. Luis Estes, David Estes, Dorian Swazel. Yeah, come on up. Don't just sit there. Remington Estes, Jade Estes, and Celia Estes. Okay. So you're Luis. Right there. Top. Yep. Sorry. Help me your name. You're Jade. Right there. I guess we should ask the council to deviate from the agenda because we are deviating. Thank you. Can we get a picture with these yeah. scouts too? Let's do it. It's good to see scouts back there. Thank <laughs> you. 
Is there anybody else in the audience that would like to introduce? <laughs> <laughs> No, thanks. Apologize, I didn't ask for a suspension of the agenda, but uh, we got it taken care of. Okay, the next thing uh, on petitions is a presentation and discussion by the Scottish Festival Board. Dave and Bill. All right, Mayor and Council, I'll let Bill do most of the talking here, but um, for many years, uh, well, the Scottish Festival has been here for a long time, and every so often, um, back, I think it was back in 2004, uh, the City Council designated different events, summer city events, summer city associations, some... Uh, some are city contributions and, and city membership, non-participatory. So the Scottish Festival, uh, according to that designation back then, it was not a city event, but it, we were associated with that event. And we've talked with the Scottish Festival Board, and they've talked as a board about, you know, just making it a city event, having it come under the umbrella of the city. And... Um, run the revenues through. Some of you may remember when we did that with the, uh, the Pace Community Theater um, and, and, and that helped them because uh, without being a, a, a associated with the city, they had to rent the, the school auditoriums and things like that. So they're, and, and we just thought as we talked with them, it might be better to have them come in the umbrella. We still can't do the Scottish Festival without all the, the uh, committees and all the work that the, the Scottish Festival Board does, it just helps to maybe come under our umbrella. So, and I think the board met, and so I'm gonna let Bill talk to the council for a bit. Before, before Bill does, I'd like to express my support for this. I think it's a wonderful thing. It's pretty much known as a pacing event anyhow, and we're just solidifying that, and there'll be good things for the Scottish Festival Board and, uh, and for the city. So I, I just wanted to let everybody know that. Yeah, our board uh, voted, and honestly, we think it's a win-win. Um, just to give you some background, um, next year is actually going to be the 40th annual Pace and Scottish Festival. So it's been going since 1984. It's completely voluntary. Um, some of our, our board are, are right there. Uh, April Jones, Kerry Welton, and Carol Elric are right there uh, representing the board tonight. Uh, it's it's an honor. Okay, first of all, 50% of us here tonight don't live in Payson. That's myself and my wife. We live in Lehigh. So if I get things mixed up and say Lehigh City, forgive me, okay? <laughs> um, it's an honor to be um, associated with the Payson Scottish Festival. My wife and I first, um, got, I guess, got involved in the festival back when Helen Scott was the president. And we feel an, an affinity to the festival. My wife had a Scottish country dance group for, and Highland, before she reminds me, uh, for almost 21 years. And for that, those 21 years, we danced at Basin. So we've had, a, a, even though we don't live here, we've had a long connection with the festival. Um, I'm often asked, why does Payson, at the festival, why does Payson have a Scottish festival? And I always hate to say I have no idea. But I found out recently that seven of the original settlers of Payson were Scottish. And um, Payson back in 1983 had, uh, Payson High School had a pipe band and they, um, I think his name was Don Langford. That might have been one of the presidents. Anyway, the, the band director came to the council and suggested that you have a Scottish festival. And the rest of it is history. The first uh, festival 
was on the 25th of August, 1984, and it was held in conjunction with the Onion Days. We're, we're now separate, as you know, because we're in July, they're in August. Um, we have a festival board of 21 volunteer members. Each one of them has very specific duties during the festival. I mean, Dave mentioned that you, the city probably couldn't run the festival as a city event on its own. And I would agree with that because um, I used to have red hair when I started <laughs> as president. And honestly, it, it's the best day of the festival is Saturday night about nine o'clock and it's all done and we can go, that was a great festival. And I think last year you probably saw in the Payson Courier, Chronicle, Chronicle, um, biggest yet, best, biggest ever, best ever, which I think is is a, I think it's a testament to the work of the board. They are, I mean, I'm president, but I have got a fantastic board. The whole thing runs so well and so easily. Um, as Dave said, we met with. Um, Mayor Wright, with Dave, uh, with Kathy Jensen, and with Janine Dean. And it, the possibility of us coming under the umbrella of the city was raised. Initially, my, my first reaction was no. Uh, um, and the first words out of my mouth were, this festival has been run as an autonomous thing that is not part of the city. And I don't want that to change. And what was said was, it won't change. We still need your, um, your board. We need you to run it. It's simply one, of, it will be one, I mean, it is one of the big three events in Payson, but it will officially be one of the big three Payson events. Um, our board met last week and we're 100% unanimous in going ahead with this if, the council approves. So basically, um, we're here tonight to get the council's blessing on this union. Thank council, you. there you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think it's a wonderful idea. Unanimous. Yeah. You bet. Thank you. We are excited to uh, move forward and continue the long success and growth of the Scottish Festival. Well, one of the things that we've been talking about is growth and the fact that we are, two things, we can never tell how many people are there at the weekend. It's completely impossible because we don't have a gate. And I think that's one of the reasons we have so many people there. Um, there are other festivals quite close by that the, because of their overheads going up year over year, the gate price has gone up year over year and it costs something like $100 to get a family into the festival. So if people are looking around and they see a free festival, it makes, you know, it's, it's a no brainer that you would take your family and spend that $100 with some of the vendors, with some of the, you know, the food vendors. And I always said that there is no way that we reckon between five and 10,000, we really can't it's a guesstimate, really is a guesstimate. But we know from sitting in the info booth and looking out across the crowd, the whole day it is packed. Um, people, people love the festival. There is no other festival in Utah that has the shade that we have in Memorial Park. It's a special festival. It's got a special feeling as Payson does as a city. It's, it's kept that, even though you know your city has expanded you've kept Main Street as your Main Street. I mean, Lehigh, I can't say that because Main Street is being destroyed, but here you've kept the heritage that you have. And I'm glad that the Pace and Scottish Festival is part of that heritage, heritage and will continue to be so. Thank you. Well, that little make us that much closer and, and we will be able to help that much more. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you.
Okay, moving on. Uh, we'll go to number three, public forum. Anyone can speak on items not on the agenda and please be conscious of your time and uh, uh, in expressing your views to us and we'll go to that point. Come on up. We talked about this before, didn't we? Welcome. Thank you, Mayor and council members. My name is Wendy Osborne and is that really loud? Okay. Yes. Don't worry about being too loud. We need to hear you. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, my name is Wendy Osborne, and I'm the executive director and founder of Tabitha's Way Local Food Pantries. And I wanted to just visit with you tonight to just do a report and let you know what we've been seeing at our food pantries um, this past year. Um, in 2022, Tabitha's Way saw a 56% increase in the number of families coming and needing food assistance at our pantries. Um, so that was a significant jump. A lot of that is attributed to, um, of course, growth in our county, but also uh, the uniqueness. Right now we have, of course, inflation and a lot of families, there's just not affordable housing here in Utah County. And so a lot of families struggling, a lot of families that uh, previously weren't food insecure now um, needing assistance, needing some help. And so, um, we're very honored to provide this help, but um, we wanted to report back to each of the cities um, the number of individuals that we've been serving from your cities in particular. So in uh, 2022, from Pace and City, um, so well, overall as an organization for 2022, uh, for all of Utah County, we served 94,000 226, I need my glasses better. Okay, there we go. 226 individuals. Um, and of that, 8,271 were from Payson. Now keep in mind that's duplicated. So each time they come to our pantry, we, we counted them. So that would be roughly, uh, our average client comes about uh, five times or less. And so that would be about six, 1,654 individuals, roughly um, unique individuals coming to our pantry from Payson City. So um, again, at our free pantries, we, we offer uh, food assistance, we provide hygiene supplies, baby supplies, um, diapers and so forth. And, um, but we, we do this work, um, we don't do this work alone. Um, there's many volunteers that come from your community as well that help us to do this work. We can't feed 94,000 individuals without the help of many, many hands. And we want to express our gratitude for the support that we've received from Payson City. Um, and its citizens, and um, just express our gratitude and honor for being able to serve these people from your community. Um, each year we hold um, a backpack event where we provide free backpacks. Last year we did over 3,000 backpacks to, to local children with filled with school supplies. We do a Thanksgiving dinner where we provide a complete Thanksgiving basket meal to families. Again, we did over 3,000 um, of which 360 of those baskets were um, military uh, veterans, military families, uh, mainly families with an individual who's deployed um, uh, and serving in our military and also at first responders as well. We, um, our police and fire departments as well. We had families struggling there. We provided those baskets to them through um, Honor 365. Um, and so, um, and then we also do a, a Christmas um, event where we hand out Christmas baskets as well. And we invite you again to come and participate with that. Um, but it's, a, it's an honor to get to do this work and to serve our communities in this capacity. And again, we just wanted to say, report back to you what your help has helped us accomplish. So just wanted to say thank you for that. So. Thank you. Council, do you have any questions? No. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank, thank you for what you do. Thank you all. Okay. Have a good evening. Okay, we have any, but, oh, come on up. Representative, please address us. Since I'm here, I might as well get up and say something. Um, first of all, I'm excited for the, the partnership with the Scottish Festival. I think this will be a great addition to our city. Appreciate all the work that our Scottish board has done in uh, moving that forward. And I would hope, and I'm excited that our, our Chamber of Commerce is here as well too. I think we've missed out on an opportunity to bring in a lot of income to our communities by not saying, hey, if you come in with a kilt today, we'll give you 10% off your groceries or whatever. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> but I think there's some opportunities to be had that if we partner and so you're sitting right in front of each other, maybe we talk to each other. Um, 
But just a brief recap since I'm here on the legislative session, I think most of you've already heard here on this council, but we were able to get uh, $100 million for the I-15 interchange and pace. And there's a couple of things that have to happen still, but the funding's approved contingent on, on some land and things like that. So that was huge. And uh, that took a lot of moving parts. It took Senator McKell, it took our council, it took our, our, our lobbyists up there, but they've, they've done good work. And so uh, we're, we're in a good place. And uh, it was really good work. And then, and then same thing for Santa Quinn as well too. So uh, we also spent uh, about $800 million on moving water to the Great Salt Lake. If you couple that with the church's donation of water shares that they announced today, that will be a, a big boon to our state in, in getting water to the Great Salt Lake and, and uh, taking care of our water needs. Um, what else do you want to know? Oh, we spent a lot of money on transportation. Oh, tax cuts. Uh, I think it was about 800 million. If I remember my numbers right, everything's jumbled now, but about $800 million in tax cuts, some from property tax. Um, most of it came from in the form of income tax and uh, some was on the social security tax was changed. Um, so we, we, we pulled that back. So people on fixed incomes uh, are less likely to pay taxes unless it's their $80,000 or more in their income, which is kind of an average home anyway. So uh, it was a good session. I mean, there's always ups and downs. And uh, as, as you know, that there's uh, sometimes you take the wins that you can get and sometimes you say no, and sometimes you go full feet in and you get everything that you want, but it was a, it was a good session. So thank you. Well, I mean, Representative Rutten, thank you for all the hard work that you did. No, thank you. I appreciate, we appreciate it. Appreciate very, very much. Yeah. Thank you. Doug. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to address this in the public forum? Anybody online? Okay. We'll go ahead and close the public forum and go on to staff reports that uh, any of the staff would like to come address us. I'll be first. Um, just just updates on water. I've sent a, I sent a text out to you guys that we've been considering uh, the effects of flooding. Uh, we have had our, our, our two vac trucks out the last three days, uh, cleaning out the storm drains, uh, trying to prepare. I think it helped for this rain um, and we'll continue to watch. We met with Utah County this morning and Highline Canal about uh, some of the choke points we have in town and getting uh, the Dry Creek Channel and Petite Neat Creek and the, the undershot that goes under the canal where the, where the two Petite Neat Creek and, and the Highline Canal meet. And uh, we'll probably have some equipment at those places. Um, if, 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 if the snow melts slowly and we have a cool spring, we sh everything should be fine if it, if it gets hot really fast, then I don't think any city in Utah is safe from flooding, but we're doing the best we can. We met with Strawberry Water and some canal companies last week, and we're just, uh, we're gonna come up with a plan uh, with, with Highline and, and maybe Utah County of if, if the water comes quickly, where can we dump that? That's a safe place, uh, the best we can, but. I uh, just wanted to let you know we're, we're proactive on this. Uh, appreciate our staff that's out cleaning and getting things done. This Saturday is the, um, the volunteer event. Uh, I think it's on Just Serve and the, the ecclesiastical units out there have had letters sent to them uh, to try to uh, clean up Dry Creek and, and get some help from the public for volunteer work. So uh, we're working on that. Um, We'll, we'll evaluate again the first or second week in April to see where we are and how warm it's getting and we'll just keep up on it. So if you have any questions, let us know, but I, I think there's some good work and planning going on uh, at least South Utah County and, and with Utah County to make sure we're as prepared as we can be. If you have any questions. I, I do, I was gonna save it for my report, but um, yesterday I had the opportunity to be down by what I affectionately known as the, the Hyatt Dairy. And there are a ton of trees that have fallen down into that, that runoff. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's the high water runoff uh, right there, but there was a lot of water coming out. 
and there, there's several trees and, and brush from there back. I assume it goes back to the interstate right there. I'm wondering if that is on the list. For yeah, we'll, we'll look at that. I think our crews will go there. If, it, if it's out in the county, we talked to the county. They've been they've been working there as well. But if it's in the city, we'll get to that. It's in the city um, for the simple fact that on the other side of the road, you've got all that new development of those those twin homes. And then the other one that I noticed, uh, I wrote it like this for council, it is north, the Pinky Creek, north of the diversion, uh, right at the mouth of the canyon. That looks awful filled in also, Dave. Yeah, I think our parks crew and the water department have been going through some of those areas, but we'll, if we haven't hit it yet, we're... I just remember from the days I used to play high water. And that, that one invariably plugged up right there where it went under the road and flooded that entire road and now there's homes that could go in there right. i think if we do our due diligence we've, we've done the best we okay thanks Dave, for pointing us out <clears throat> highway 91 or whatever it is 97 i don't know anyway who takes care of the drainage on that sr 198 the one that goes yeah. through it's it's a state road and so the, the state has the primary responsibility, but are you particularly in one spot? Yeah, on 3rd East, down by uh, Ron's Tires. I know it's that today, too. It is what? I know it's that today, too. Yeah, it is clear full okay. and out on the road and down a block west of that also. It's bad. One by where the IFA used to be. That steel springs and then just okay. bike run board. Yeah. I don't know. Travis, is that the one where they were going to do some of the fix there and they've backed off for a little bit? So, yeah, there, we know there's some issues there. We've let you not know that, but we'll we'll see if there's anything that can be done. One, one place that usually is a hotbed is right there at the well, 200 I South in the highway. And I noticed that today was not, it was handling it very well. Okay. Across from talk of time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one didn't look as bad this storm. So, okay, thank you. Robert, looks like you're coming up. <laughs> Just really briefly, Council, um, I mentioned this at our retreat that we had applied for um, a grant uh, through um, MAG for some funding uh, for a technical assistant grant to governments. Uh, and I just wanted to let you know that we were awarded that grant. Uh, so it's a total of $275,000. Uh, the city will be contributing 35,000 of that, and then we get 240. And the purpose of this grant, <clears throat> uh, we have some, we have a lot of good planning work going on in our city right now. Uh, one of which is the station area. And so UTA has been paying for some planning out there and, and that's moving forward. And then we've been, as a city, putting a lot of effort into downtown, but there's a long way between those two and some really, really critical uh, infrastructure and property. Uh, and so this, the purpose of this grant is twofold. Uh, one, to do some planning of, especially the Flying J area, uh, to really understand how to utilize that area to the best of its economic and social uh, capacity so we can really work with the landowners there to understand how to have that property develop and, and all of that surrounding and then the connection of the the main street corridor to downtown and then the second part of that grant is to create an active transportation plan for our entire community so we're really excited about that and just wanted to highlight that to you thank you robert any other staff? Does it look like uh, if there's any other staff that wants to take advantage? So we'll move to council reports, starting with council postcard. I think I've addressed everything. Okay, wonderful. Uh, council Carter. I don't. I don't believe I have anything either. Okay. Council Beecher. I'm shooting for a short meeting. Tonight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got about 20 uh -oh. minutes worth of stuff. We're good to go here. Um, no, just a couple of things that, that I wanted to bring up that I've been thinking about as I drive around and, and people are mentioning these flood areas. I know that, that it's definitely the squeaky wheel that gets the oil right now. And with water coming down, 
fear of the rain, the snow, whatever it might be, if we could just start to document some of these areas that have high amounts of water, something that's pooling. I noticed on Sunday was down by, was doing some service at the uh, care center down by the hospital, right there on the corner, the water was eight inches deep on the corner, um, right there by family pharmacy. Uh, down the street from me, there was a corner that, that had eight or nine inches on it. And if we can just maybe isolate those and when the water is gone, go back and say, hey, this had a high water, why? What's going on? What's under it? Um, I don't know if our police officers can just say, hey, look, there's a water puddle. Let's take a picture of it. I know that gets kind of annoying, but and in a desert, we don't know where those water puddles appear until it's too late, right? Um, you don't need to worry about uh, 450 West. We know where that, or eight, whatever that is, 800 West. We're good on that one. We know where it floods there. But everything else would be great if we could kind of start to document where some of that is. And when we get some downtime, yeah, right. Um, we could work that way. Uh, the other is I was driving out Arrowhead Trail. I know that the shoulder is kind of soft anyway, but there are getting to be some really big like drop-offs there on the edge of that. Um, we could get somebody down there to double check that and make sure we're not creating a hazard. Um, somebody going off the edge of that and dropping into a five foot deep hole, you know. Um, none of them are quite that deep. Those are in the, the residential areas, so we're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all and just one more thing since brett brought that up is we did talk with utah county this morning i just wanted to bring it up to the council because you may get calls on this as well but um the the issue of sandbags and sanding uh, we, we do have sand we have uh, fifty thousand sandbags and i think we ordered 20 more thousand today but in talking with the county they've got the same issue and people it seems to be that people are panicking right now because it's in the news. You know, it's as bad as 1984. So everybody is calling wanting sandbags and it's really, you don't need them yet. And if you fill them now and put them somewhere, they're gonna be hard. They're gonna be hard to stack when, it, when the water comes in late April or May. So uh, Utah County kind of made the decision. They're not just gonna open it up that anybody wants to come and get a sandbag, but they'll look at each request and, and try to determine if they need it now or or hold off. So I, we kind of want to follow a similar thing. I, we opened it up a few years ago to anybody and the sandbags were gone within like four hours. And, and I think people want to hoard them because they might need them and many of them don't end up using them. And so we just want to be, you know, uh, diligent on, on who needs them in the areas that we need them. But I know you guys get calls. And so if you can just help us, if, if there's needs in the area, we'll make sure we get uh, sand and, and bags in those areas. But um, at this point, at this early in the season, I don't think there's a, we're not, we're not inclined to just open it up, say, come and get whatever sandbags you want and we'll deliver some sand. Um, but we will, if, if there's a need, we'll get them to them. So I don't know if you have any questions on that, but we're just, we, we just don't want to have a run on the, just on the bank, so to speak. And, and have them gone when we might need them when the high, the, the high water historically usually comes sometime toward the middle of May to at the end of May for a couple of weeks. So that's when the big water is projected to come. And if it gets real hot, it could come sooner, but that's historically when it usually comes. But we'll, if you have any thoughts or, or uh, calls or anything like that, like that, just let us know and we'll, we'll work the best we can with the residents and with whoever we have. Just to comment, um, we looked at this two years ago. Um, with an automatic sandbag filling machine. They're, they're fairly inexpensive. I mean, for ten or twelve thousand dollars a year, I'm wondering if that would uh, mitigate some of the. I I I seen. I, I would this down by the ball fields when that sandbag. And there was probably just a lot of bags that never got filled that went in trunks of cars yeah. uh, for the purpose of exactly what you were, you were saying. So I'm, I'm wondering if we invested in one of those. And I, I don't know, maybe we, that's the yeah, answer to it. The, the National Guard had one of those. We, we have two of them go back on the back of the Sanders that it has two funnels. You just switch from one side to the next. Oh. So we bought one and then they made one. 
okay. years ago. I, I know. I know when we 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 filled up a lot of sandbags down at the old ball fields uh, yeah. a few years ago, but it seemed like we could fill them quicker than. And I know there was. I don't know if it was Utah I, County or somebody. They they had a big fancy machine and didn't work really well. I think we filled more on our own than they did. I think it was the National Guard that had was it, it was the National Guard that brought it. But but yeah, we've got a couple that hooks on the end of Sanders and. I'm just wondering if that that would be much, and and the, maybe we we post that. I'm just trying to think ahead that we're we're going to have the sandbag truck there at this specific time from one a.m. or one p.m. to four p.m. or something, and we fill sandbags and then it's done for the day, and we'll we'll watch the weather and determine when we need to fill more. Yeah, we've got a few locations throughout the city, and we're we, I've been working with Woodbury to use the old ball fields again. It's not our property anymore, and I think we've got that worked out. But we'll have strategic locations throughout the town with some with uh, loads of sand and bags, and uh, we'll we'll try to be proactive in where and when we they can come and get them, and and we'll just kind of play it by ear. This morning when we were meeting with Highline in Utah County, it was like let's get back together like during Easter during that week uh, maybe the week after the eighth and then reevaluate again and see see how warm it's getting and and the snow pack so we'll we'll keep evaluating it but just in case you get calls on the sandbags we do have them we we are prepared um we're just not ready at this point to open it up for anybody to come and get them one one more thing i'd like to add uh, uh brandon uh gordon uh, County Commissioner, I received a telephone call from him, and I, he asked specifically if we had any needs, if, if we needed something for the county, and I expressed to him I was grateful for that uh, offer of help and offered our, our cooperation as well. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and, and move on um, to number number two. Where are we at? We're at oh, well, number four at uh, petitions. Staff report, we've done that. So we'll go on to action items uh, with BD. We'll have a discussion about the Golden Onion Days uh, uh, parade uh, uh, due to the fact that we're going to be doing some work on uh, the main street. Uh, I think this is very appropriate. And with, if Chief uh, uh, Bishop's here, uh, as he's coming up, uh, there are some different uh, scenarios. Uh, one of the scenarios is that uh, if we can obtain some extra funding, we may be able to go all the way to 700 South. That depends on the, the source that we're gonna take a look at, but uh, Chief will explain some of the options. Thanks, Mayor, if we can get that. Oh, Travis is pulling that up here. Uh, um, we were presented with a couple options a few weeks ago. Um, as you'll see, they're kind of hard to see. Anyway, basically, uh, some of our options were to uh, start at the original location, go to 8 South, and then go east to 6 East down 60 East and finish on the north end of town. Um, another option uh, was to use um, uh, 1400 South or 800 South, go out onto the highway and then use the highway all the way over to the hospital. Um, that would be a worst case scenario if, if we have to rip up from 7th all the way to the highway, if we get the full amount. Uh, the mayor and Dave spoke last week and Dave uh, mentioned that we could, if we don't do that construction only for the two blocks, we could just go to third south, come west out onto the highway, make the loop around the old bank and then back onto Main Street and finish like we normally do. So I, I think between uh, that discussion, I think that's the, the direction we probably would want to go at this point and then just maybe bring it back at a, a later date when did, did you say go west could we go east that's what i was thinking we could go <laughs> east on 300 south and go down uh, uh first or second uh east and then come out on the highway and make that jog back to main street 
Oh, you want to go east instead of west. Yeah. Our, our, the only thing, and Janine and I were talking about this, we have a couple of semi-trucks and some some uh, okay. floats that are not going to make some of those narrow of those, turns. But there don't, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> one turn, which would be uh, you know, 200 east roughly, and then there'd be another one there at 100 north, north right. going to the main street. So what... We we could we could do a test run, maybe take one of the dump trucks or something around there and see if we could make yeah, it around. It, it there. would just be less cumbersome, you know. We don't have to worry about closing that down. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. that's just a What's that? The longest float. Is yours a semi truck with a trailer? Yes. Our float is huge. Okay. okay. Just take the float out of the well, we have longer vehicles than that though. That's what I mean, the length. So we have a semi truck with a with a 52 foot flatbed that has like some of the uh, bands and a few things on it. We've got some time we can do that. <laughs> we could do that. So I'm OK. Um, it doesn't matter to us. I mean, the only one I really didn't like is the 60s because of the the ability to detour uh, across over the hill into town and the width of 60s along some of the older neighborhoods makes it a little dangerous uh, right there. So. Um, any of the other two or three options is we're fine with um, the maybe mayor's idea may work up. if we stopped at petite meat well we have to come across the highway Shortens <laughs> it a little bit. <laughs> well the only problem is we have to have a place to disperse people yeah. well that's what the advantage there's the the church in petite meat right there at the end of that route and that would be kind of a good dispersing place you hit the highway then you could go east and west and the highways aren't blocked yeah, you yeah, could. I, I, other than we want that for flow, but other than that, yeah, then we could. I, I've never liked it bisecting the city right in half. I've complained since day one up here that I don't like it running down a, Main Street. Down Main Street because you can't get across town. You, there's no way to get. Yeah, it's difficult. Sixth East and Main are hard to, first to get west through. at all. It, you just can't get there. You have to go all the way out and around, and so that's just my opinion. I don't like that, but yeah, the only problem with that is that we have. A, a lot of vendors and a lot of stuff at the park that, that that's where p families go. We have a lot more sitting areas there. We have the churches there going down main street is kind of the traditional route that I think most of the residents would prefer to do that. Well then um, let's just move the carnival somewhere else. I don't know where we'd move it. I don't I'm know okay if I've been trying that. to do that for six years too. I know. I, I think Santa put a lot of idea. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you, Brett. We really do. <laughs> no, I, I'm being honest. I keep telling April that we're just going to cancel the parade again. She gets mad at me every time I say yeah. that. But that's because he's the new John Marshall. It's not because he's going to be nominated. That's not possible. I got to work that day. <laughs> the other thing is, I get to choose it. So, yeah, and he's not going to choose me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um anyway not take up a lot of time but I, th I think if if uh when we get to that point whether or not we're gonna fund that clear to seventh south we probably need to come back and make that decision but I i'm fine either way i think it's going to take us about as many people to do it either way and, and if we can go east we're i'm okay to go east i just thought third south would be a safest way yeah. to there. turn a semi truck on but yeah uh, i'm not emotionally attached time. to any of them we so. got time yeah so anyway that's the key is we need to know where we're at when the time comes okay. i've seen the way things go we may not have a problem go right down main street we yeah, know we could <laughs> we'll see travis says we're going to be in construction so now we're, <laughs> we're something's going to happen we better put you one up there I just wanted to also say that um, one of the questions brought up was to make sure you dot was okay with whatever we do. And I did give them a call and they said, as long as chief is good with the roads and the detours and everything, they have no problem, whatever we decide. So just wanted to let you That's know. That's good that. to hear. Okay. Okay. We'll go ahead uh, to number two on the action items uh, resolution. Do we need a motion on that one. I no. no. Nine, I don't think we, I don't think we decided anything, did we? We just got to have the flexibility. Yeah, because of the fact that we don't know don't construction yet. yet. Okay. Okay. We're, it's set up for that if we needed it. So. Okay. Uh, resolution RNC annexation petition for consideration of acceptance and further review, located at approximately 
uh, south of 900 North, 9600 South County address, and west of 400 West, 3550 West County address, consisting of 40.5 acres. Robert? Awesome, thank you. So before I go into this, I have to say one thing that I forgot first, it, when I came up here the first time. Um, a couple Sundays ago, I found myself in the very unexpected situation of being in Mountain View Hospital in the emergency room with my son, uh, my three-year-old, and then the very unexpected situation of having him transported via ambulance to another hospital. So I just wanted to give a really, really big shout out to our paramedics here in Payson. They are fantastic. Uh, Chief Spencer and his team are amazing. And I just wanted on a personal note to say they're awesome. So I know. <laughs> With that, uh, this is an annexation part petition. Uh, so what we're discussing here tonight is th the only thing that we're talking about is whether or not the council wants to accept this for further review. We're not at the stage of annexation at this time. It's just uh, a decision from the council of can the staff now move ahead, actually go through the process of evaluating all of these different things and working with the applicant uh, to work out all of these details. But the annexation petition that we're considering tonight uh, is the RNC annexation. Uh, Justin Hill is the applicant, uh, and it's approximately 40.5 acres uh, in the uh, northwest quadrant of our city. Uh, this is 900 south, or, or excuse me, 900 north, or 9600 south. Uh, the, the main street uh, interchange is right up here. This is the bowling alley right here. And so this is just a little bit west uh, along 9600 South. Um, this property right down here, if you can see my mouse, this is the property that was recently annexed as part of the, the Orchard Park uh, industrial area. Uh, and so uh, these properties are those that are being considered for annexation. Um, as staff, we we fully recommend uh, that the that the council go ahead and uh, accept this for further review. That will give us a chance as staff to uh, further evaluate it and, and then come back to you with a recommendation. So I'm available for any question. Can I ask a quick question? I know that the annexation isn't contingent upon what the zoning will be, but I'm just curious as to what the master plan shows this zoned as. Is it? Light industrial, residential. So we're we're thinking mostly light industrial. Okay. There there may be some properties that are not ready to develop yet that are included as part of this, and and those might come in as like an an A five holding zone or something like that. That those are the things that we would further work out, but well, most likely like be light some industrial. Transitional, some transitional areas there. So we, I, just, I mean, I'm just curious. one of the one of the logic basis is that you have you know higher density uh on the east side of this is 400 west right here this road right here yeah. and you have some higher density over here the road really becomes kind of a natural barrier and and transition area so if we wanted to really look at having that be the boundary of our i1 light industrial area that that makes some sense um, but again, if, if those specific property owners maybe want to hold off for a little bit and, and further evaluate uh, their, their desires, we could do that too. So basically, but, basically what you're asking for is the time to study it. Correct. And further, further to the West, obviously, would be uh, think, light industrial. I think what's satisfying on this is we're not modifying. But we're, yes. we're filling the city in in a block. I, I thought we were leaving it. I thought we were leaving a gap, but after I looked at it, it's already city. It, yeah. Well, no, it's it's a description gap. Yeah, is what right. it is. Yeah. It's a it's a paper yeah. gap, not a uh, physical gap. And kudos to the applicant for for taking care of that. <laughs> yeah, you gonna yes. pay me as a surveyor to do that? A lot of a lot of legs. Yeah, Mayor, I'd make a motion. Okay. If if we're ready, I'll sounds make like we're ready for a motion that we accept the um, forty point five acre uh, request from RNC. Is it RNC? RNC annexation <laughs> request as outlined. 
for further view, right? For further review. Yes. Okay. Second. Okay, we have a motion been seconded. Roll call vote starting with Council Proskard. Yes. Council Carter. Yes. Council Beecher. Yes. Council Christensen. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Carries unanimously. Is there, there's pending development in there on some of this. What is the time frame that we're, we're looking at this? Uh, for this annexation to be reviewed further. Um, normal kind of normal DRC time frame okay. type thing. We, we don't expect this to be held up very long. Okay. Thanks. Good question. Okay, we'll move on to e, uh, the proposed work session. I'll ask the council if uh, uh, you would allow us to go ahead and uh, uh, table the water conservation standards. Uh, uh, Dave Tuckett has not is not able to attend and would like to, to have him present. So if, if that's okay with the council, would like to. I move that we table it for another time. Okay. Even though I'd like to see it happen. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a second. <laughs> okay, we got a motion and been seconded. I believe we can do a. Uh, can we do it just a regular vote? All in favor, say aye. 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 Good. Okay, the next uh, one F. Uh, motion for adjournment. Can I make a motion the way adjourn? Yes. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> okay. All in favor again. Aye. Yes. Aye. Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for staying.